wonderful sermon, the one and only Reverend Angel Dust. God is blessed, everyone. Last week, 
to lay credence to my argument on this table while the asshole chef was perfecting waffles, what was he using to make sure the waffles did not adhere to the waffle maker? Okay. Pam Kitchen Spray. Woo. Pam Kitchen Spray, medicinally used, will cure you of stress. <laughs> However, Pam Kitchen Spray can also be abused to cause neurological injury. It's true. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And of course, Pam Kitchen Spray is perfectly legal. Marijuana can be used for your Chinese tennis shoes. <laughs> Marijuana can be used for oil to power your biofuel vehicle. Yes. <clears throat> Marijuana can be used to produce paper upon which the U.S. Constitution is written. This country USA. is based USA. on USA. USA. Marijuana. USA. 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 The very foundation of this country is inscripted on marijuana, and yet it is illegal. Smoke the Constitution. That means the Smithsonian Institution. What? Smithsonian Institute it, right? could be prosecuted for possession. Arrest them! Burn them. They're smoking Burn weed! Burn them. Burn them. We must legalize it! Burn them! Pray for the Smithsonian Institute so that they will not be prosecuted by the fascist capitalist people prohibition yeah. Yeah. that resides in Congress and the Senate today. I was talking to uh, a congregation member, member Brother Jared before about stocks in oil from the ground, fossil fuel oil. <laughs> and he was telling me that the U.S. government would not allow the fossil fuel oil companies to go bankrupt. Anything associated with oil is a safe bet if you are investing in stocks. You can sniff gasoline and get hot which would you rather do smoke marijuana or sniff gasoline yes by the government, but it is also perfectly legal. What is wrong with this picture? We need to refocus Congress. We need to refocus the state government. We need to refocus Governor Scott and his Republican Party crony. You know, medical marijuana is on the ballot. Governor Scott opposes legalizing medical marijuana. And former Governor Christ, who used to be a Republican and is, was an independent and is now switched over to the Democratic Party, supports medical marijuana. So, all of these 
these people going to the ballot box on uh, November 4th who are supporting medical marijuana, who should they vote for? Uh, sir. <clears throat> Actually, uh, Governor Scott said that uh, he would sign a medical marijuana bill. Even though he opposes it? Yes. The exorcism is working! The exorcism is working! <laughs> All right, let's hope it keeps working. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, our mother. Our mother. Our mother who grows the greatest medical marijuana. Who grows the greatest medical marijuana. Under the influence of the heavenly domestic. Under the influence of the heavenly domestic. That the angels trim up there. That the angels trim up there. Mellow is that herb. Mellow is that herb. Oh, great dumpster goddess Jamba. Is she ever high? Is she ever high? Officer friendly. Officer friendly. Please forgive us. Please forgive us. If we were driving too slowly by the polling station. If we were driving too slowly by the polling station. Looking for a parking place. Looking for a parking place. So that we could vote. So that we would vote. And if she finds anything suspicious, and she finds anything suspicious, we have no idea how it got there. We have no idea how it got there. But, 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 but we are absolutely 100% sure. We are absolutely 100% Jesus, the kingpin, who died for all of our drug trafficking. Jesus, the kingpin, who died for all of our drug trafficking, is totally responsible. Is totally responsible. The time for she has liability insurance. Oh, 
of that guy's under, Rob Ford. No wonder he never cracks a smile. <laughs> yes! <laughs> you know how dumb Rob Ford is in Mayor Toronto? When he heard the song Rocky Mountain High, he thought that, that, that it was a crack house for tree. <laughs> You know how bad Mitt Romney wanted to be president? He was going to give Alan Keyes a blowjob. <laughs> well, I work at Walmart and this guy and this woman said I was rude and I said she was out of her freaking mind. You heard of the movie 20 minutes from 20 feet from fame? Well, when it comes to Donald Sterling, it's 20, he's 20 minutes from his brain. Fuck yes. Well, I have a friend who's having some woman problems. So I told his father, father to get him a transvestite. Yeah. <laughs> well, Caroline Kennedy is the ambassador of Japan, and I'll bet she's making, making a killing on the Japanese stock market. Get it? <laughs> Kennedy killing? There's this guy that got killed by a swan, and that's a true story. <laughs> but then again, there was this guy that got killed by a beaver, remember Tom? Yes. And I said, that beaver just didn't give a damn. Well, my dog chased my cat into the into my room. Talk about a pussy. <laughs> well, there was this road worker. He was like working on the road, and um, I said, "So how far down does this construction go?" And he said, "I don't know." Well, I bet you know what time. You know what I like about cars? They get one thing I don't. Freeways. Well, I guess, as Reverend Angel does say, medical marijuana is on the ballot. Well, Oprah Winfrey just launched her own brand of tea. But I think Owen stands, she's going to hop on that medical marijuana issue, and Owen is going to stand for the Oprah Weed Network. Yes! Everybody loves Oprah Weed. And you get a joint. You get a joint. Shh. Well, I know someone so dumb that they asked Solange Knowles for anger management advice. Oh! Oh! <laughs> I have a dream. And that dream is to launch my own hair care network. Good. I've already invented pumpkin white. 
an algae white, and shamrock white. Well, work, working at Walmart reminds me of one thing, and this is my Dr. Phil moment, that thanking a customer for doing what they're supposed to do is like thanking an eight-year-old for using the toilet. Yes. <laughs> Well, you ever watch that show called The Mentalist with Simon Baker? No. He used to be in this show called The Guardian. And there's one thing he doesn't do in The Mentalist that he did in The Garden. Now, uh, what's it called? Say what? Acting. I said say what? What? Oh, yeah, acting. Well, I'm going to New York in September, where I used to live, and I'm going to go to the New World Trade Center, One World Trade Center, and, it's a, and the thing is this. You're a little late. Yeah, I am a little late. <laughs> Shut him down, Greg. Shut him the fuck down. <laughs> and they voted the security guard. The security guard was sleeping. And if, if he got voted the best security guard of the year, the year before, and if he's their best, I hate to see what their worst is. <laughs> Kate Gosselin, you know what her favorite position is? No. 69. Actually, I think she likes a doggy style. Uh, <laughs> is, it, is she more like an in vitro gal? <laughs> she is an in vitro. Well, you heard of Charlie Sheen and his goddesses? What? Well, one of them quit. So I guess two out of three, like that Meat Love song, two out of three ain't bad. There it is. There it is. said this, but I know a plumber so dumb that he drowned in a bathtub. Thank you. 
comedy circuit and uh, one of our beloved stars, Ishmael Lofi, is here tonight, but this may be his swan song for the Tabernacle of Hedonism. He is moving to a bigger city, moving to bigger and better things. We hope he will never forget us, and we hope that we were somewhat of a springboard for him to excel to greatness. So Ishmael Lutfi will be here later on in the evening. At this time, I would like to welcome to the stage, hmm? I don't know what that thing is. That's for our official May dumpster jam coming up at the end of the evening. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to get spiritual, we're doing our summer May dumpster jam. Okay? So don't go away. I promise you it'll be a big deal. I'm going to call the alligator and let them know we're coming. We got 44 views from the last one. Wow. Really? Wow. Well, that's 24 people all over the entire world, ladies and gentlemen. All right. If I can have everyone's attention, please welcome to the stage Logan Stalling. Cool, I want to use it. Can you tell me what it is? It's like, uh, is it? It does not function. Fuck it. It doesn't make noise, James Wesson. Nothing. I'm going to beat you to death. Right. Because you're on bicycle. Sort of. Sort of. All right. I guess I got to steal one from, uh, I got to steal one from, uh, what's his name? Robert Waters, right? This is for all the weak people in the audience. Is there anyone here who's weak? I wish to assume other names, other bodies, other others. I want everyone to forget this face, and then another, and then another, and then themselves, and all this change. And we wipe away the mist in the mirror, take off creams, and slowly pull the towel away. Maybe you'll be a bunny, or your head, an egg, that hatches and fly away, and congruous birds, a dove and robin, some that can't fly and fall, ostriches and penguins, and they lie, necks broken within a clogged sink that gurgles water and hair and feathers and runs all over them. You want to be someone who makes good decisions, Someone who doesn't piss right before they shit, and if they do, they do it before they shower. Someone aloof who doesn't worry about the last unnatural percent present in your hypoallergenic face washes. Careful to avoid the eyes on the odd chance you're finally special. One in 100 and you get eye cancer. Not believing, not seeing. That only happens to other people. Someone who has a costume designer and a costume closet and costume is customary and you're the star of your own deluded fucking sitcom where it's all for you, but you don't watch TV. It rots your brain. You watch movies. You inspect internally, but you don't watch movies. They contaminate your mind. You read books, eternally introspective, but you don't read books. They're fucking stupid. You play sports. You're fucking stupid, but you don't play sports. You have bad bones. You have no mind, no bones, no body, because we are smashed and rearranged and scalpeled and beaten to death, and we're just jelly on the ground congealing in the water and feathers. And you still bleed from where you think your asshole is, and we still aren't sure why. Spread, malevolent marmalade, clogging in the drain, spiraling. I want to be different like nobody else. Unlike any way anyone would make, and then be unmade and done. Thank you. Play some intermittent music. Oh, well. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the comedy stylings of Ishmael Luffy.
But I, I promise you, you have value. Thanks. You have great value, value that a lot of people don't comprehend. The things that we do, even if there are four people here, or 50, if we do the Waffle House extravaganza, or if it's me having some kind of a weird meltdown and there's four people here, and that's the way it is, has tremendous value because then we share it on the internet, we get people curious, we don't play safe, uh, we don't do uh, necessarily commercial things, which there's nothing wrong with that, but I mean, how many fucking bird and butterfly poems do you want to hear? How many bird and butterfly pictures do you want to see? Uh, and so, you know, every once in a while, yes, you want to go on It's a Small World After All, but also you want to go on a roller coaster that's going to make you feel like it's coming off the tracks and you're about to die because you get that thrill. Yeah. And you need that thrill, because if life doesn't have a thrill for you, uh, you, 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 you might be doing it wrong. <laughs> might be more lube, or, or you know, a different scenario, or a different partner, or a different scene, or a different uh, way of thinking about things. Hell yeah. So what I want to say tonight is, a lot of people, uh, this is a thing that, that I've been dealing with, People have come up to me lately and said, people who have followed me for, you know, 10 years or so, and said, get a job. No. Get a job. Don't get a job. And I want to tell those people to get a wife. Oh, 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 snap. Burn. Shut them down, Tom. Shut the fuck down, Tom. Get a wife. Jobs are great. People need people to do the worst of things. You gotta clean toilets, yeah. wipe down walls, yeah. you gotta debacterialize some infestation that occurred at the McDonald's. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To, uh, you know, when that lady, you know, couldn't get her chicken nuggets and clean that blood up and you know shit, you know, people have to do some nasty shit in the world. Um, I cleaned shit from the top of a toilet once. You sat on a closed lid. I have, put shit, I have put shit on the top of a toilet in all the wrong places. That was you. If you... If, well, no, this is my point. If you, as human beings, haven't had the opportunity, whether you intended to do it or by accident, haven't had the opportunity to put shit in all the wrong places, you have not had a full life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you need to have the experience, if you want to have a full life, you need to have the experience of being on a date with the perfect person. And you have that one sip, that one extra sip of that wine that came out of the Ernest and Julio Gallo jug that was four weeks old in the fridge. And be, be like, you know what I really love about you? When I look into your eyes, the thing that I really Where's your bathroom? Oh, it's in right there? Okay, I'll be right back. Excuse me for a moment. Wait right here. Just give me a second. It's down that hall. Be right back.
sixty dollars for El Buster. Right here, sixty dollars. Sixty dollars. Not gonna get a better deal. It's the only El Ostrich painting. If anybody wants to team up and share it. I actually do kind of want that. I really want it, though. That is awesome. Think about it. I, I don't have any money. I'm really I'm too drunk to do the show. And uh, I uh, puked in the bathroom just now and shit my pants as we're speaking. Are you down? Uh, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the comedy stylings of Cassandra. Give her a round of applause. Yeah. Yeah. Here is the owner of the Albostrich. The one and only Albostrich. Hello, how are you? How are you? Thank you so much for having me tonight. So, have you ever thought that people in heaven might be taking bets on your day-to-day -day life, like this is an example. Hey, Ted, I bet you she can't pass them donuts without taking a bite or two. Shoot, girl, she been on a diet. I'll take that bet. But you know what? Gus won. I like donuts. Shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is Cassie Delicious. Woo! And I have not done stand-up for a long time, and I have my roommate to thank for this. But I have kind of limited it down to what I want to do with my life to either being a comedian or a serial killer. <laughs> I've had more practice at one than the other, but you guys might be able to help me decide. And I see there's a lot of hecklers, so, you know, I'm keeping your faces in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I think at one point every comedian probably thought like, I, I should probably be like a politician or something, you know? Because I got so many thoughts in my head and people need to hear them. But then took another bomb grip and was like, fuck that shit, man. They're gonna be all up in my shit, wanna know about my coke addiction and those prostitutes I was fucking. <laughs> I mean, that shit didn't happen yet, but we all know how the government works. <laughs> I was on a dating site, you know? Like, they have this question on there. Well, first off, I met this guy on there. He was like 98% my match, 68% my friend. I don't know how the fuck they figured this out. And then like 3% my enemy. But then it said that he likes to talk about the government and have these deep intellectual conversations. And I'm like, 3% my ass? Shit. But, uh... <laughs> I don't care if you think I'm funny. I'm gonna kill you all if you don't. But anyways, <laughs> you said it's still a lot of ass. I don't know what you said, but don't heckle me. Shut it down. <laughs> I'll shut, shut you me, down. Shut me the fuck down. You don't want me to, honey. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, <laughs> you're making me forget my jokes. So anyways, so I really think that like I don't want a three percent enemy. I really like him to be about a 10% enemy, you know, just enough to where I want to get pissed off and like choke the shit out of you and then have amazing sex with you, you know, just get so angry, I hate you so much, I'm going to suffocate you with my vagina. That, that's how it has to go. But um, they had this really weird question on there. They were like, do you have rape fantasies? And I'm like, I have so many questions. Like, first off, are you asking me if I like to rape people or if I like to be raped? I mean, you should probably narrow that down, just in case. <laughs> but secondly, I was kind of like, I don't think I've ever had rape fantasies as much as I've had like prostitution fantasies. And I mean, it's not for money or anything. It's more like the prostitution barter system. Like, I'm sorry, Mr. Police Officer, I can't pay that ticket with money. Or, you know, 
sorry, Mr. Big Burly Tow Truck Driver. I, I tend to be in a park there. You know, maybe we could work something out. And he's like, you know my name is Fred. You've been parking in the spot every day. How many times do we have to have sex this way? You already have my baby. <laughs> or my favorite one, like, please, Mr. Karaoke Guy, please put my name to the top of the list, and maybe you can get on top of me later. You know? <laughs> I like karaoke a lot. But why is it that guys that have, like, little dicks will be like, but it's thick. I'm like, I've never met a thin penis before, and I wonder, like, could it boldly go where no penis has gone before? Would it, like, you know, clean the drain out, you know what I mean? Or, like, go to the kitchen and do some dishes at least? <laughs> um, I like to think that of my kitchen as church. I mean, because really, when the high mind and the hungry mind mix, it becomes a religious experience. I like to tell my boss, like, I'm sorry, I can't come to work Sunday. I'm going to be in the church worshiping. And it's the truth. But, like, high folks will make some shit, and when you get sober and try to eat the same thing, be like, what the fuck? Like, high folks would be like, I think that we should make, like, some baked potatoes and, like, put ice cream on top, man. And maybe that would be okay, but like they put like the sour cream and bacon bits and chives and shit on top still. <laughs> I don't know how that's supposed to segue into the next joke, but um, like how come guys can never play pool and look straight? Like I promise you, they gotta, they gotta like do their little stick their butt out pose and four of their best friends are sitting behind them and they're like, don't worry, dudes. I'm gonna knock these balls into that hole hardcore. <laughs> and they're like stroking a pole and shit. That shit don't look straight to me. And I'm thinking gay guys gotta get confused, like, cause they're like, man, look at all these hot gay men for me tonight. And it ain't. I, well, maybe it is. I don't know. <laughs> so I met this guy. I was hanging at his house, you know. And he was like, if you get scared, you can come right here, motherfucker. We, we, if something comes, if the 5 -0 come, I'm a 21 that shit, now nah, I mean, we ain't have no problems, because motherfuckers around here get guns to the dome on a daily. Nah, I mean, don't be acting scared. -y. And I was like, I'm sorry, but in my neighborhood, I just prefer things like neighborhood watch and hopscotch and double dutch. And he just looked at me and just was quiet for a minute. He's like, you know what, you rat. <laughs> but even still, I was like, I need a new drug dealer because I don't want your booty hole weed. Every time you hear sirens, you put it up your butthole. I don't think this is going to work for me. <laughs> but I did start to think about how, like, if I was to work at a prison, well, it would be a bad idea. I could never work at a prison. I'd be all like, hey. How'd you get those muscles? Can I touch them with my mouth? Can we be cellmates? Why y'all looking at me like that? I was gonna pick like the drug dealers, not the serial killers or anything. Unless I take that first job where I'm killing folks for a living and then it might work out just fine. But y'all seem safe. I only got to kill like one of you, so that don't really put me in the serial killer status. All right, y'all. Have a good night. I'm Cassie Delicious. Give a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Glad you're here tonight. Ishmael's Swan Song. <laughs> <laughs> Come see him tomorrow. Lots of comedians tomorrow night. Uh, they have a big comedy night here at 1982 tomorrow night. Ladies and gentlemen, our final comedian tonight, and then after this final comedian, I believe we are going to have a religious experience and we're all going to do it together. It's going to be a big, big, holy May Tabernacle Dumpster Jam Session. 
Uh, probably this will go online. What I want to tell you is it will affirm that you are alive and here on planet Earth tonight. And with all your great potential, anything is possible in the future. So I want you to think about that. Ladies and gentlemen, our final comedian, please welcome to the stage, Simon Nash! Here your host, Tom Miller. Hey. Here for Cassie, it's a very funny lady. If I had a quarter for every time Cassie made me laugh, I could go to the movies in 1943. Assuming I already had a quarter in my pocket. I've, uh, been trying to last longer in bed, and my dad told me to uh, think about baseball, but I never really watched baseball, so I just ended up thinking of the Sandlot, and I think it's turning me into a gay pedophile. <laughs> I, uh, I shaved today, but I never shaved completely, because I think the naked face would be too confusing for the general population. You know, like I can't have this saying, hello, my name is Simon. And I have the best resume in this interview. And like this, saying, Hello, my name is Moonbeam. And I have the best acid at this bar. Because people see me and they think I'm hippie. I'm not. I hate hippies. I hate the environment. My father was killed by a bear. But uh, I like dressing flamboyantly. I like wearing brightly colored shirts because it makes me feel like an exotic bird trying to attract a mate. I told this to my girlfriend and she said, ooh, you want a new girlfriend? And I said, no, I want birds. <laughs> now that you mention it, maybe I should be with someone who's more understanding of my feathered desires. It's my political joke for the evening. It's about marriage rights, so I want to fuck a bird. Yeah, fuck a bird, fuck bird. Yeah, Tabernacle applause break. This guy over here playing mommy and Batman at the same time, making fun of Ismail for looking like a kid. Yeah, I have this problem with my girlfriend. She thinks I'm prettier than I am. We go out to lunch and she's convinced that people are just staring at me. She's like, Simon, these girls look at you too much. I'm gonna have to put a paper bag over your head. What the fuck? You think people are gonna look at me less if there's a paper bag on my head? At that point, I just looked like a homeless vigilante, or like a tabernacle regular. I don't know. Um, uh, this is my impression of a horse whisperer. Hey. Hey. This is my impression of a very conservative horse, shamefully casting his vote in the British Parliament. This is um, a different horse whisperer. Horse. Horse. This is um, a chain smoker describing his own voice. Horse. Horse. This is um, you not liking these jokes. This is a quiet pimp cursing his own employees. You guys ever think what it would be like to uh, have known Adolf before he was Hitler? You know, just, just like meet him once before you find out what his grand plan is. Your wife comes in after hearing the radio broadcast and she's like, Honey, do you remember Adolf? Adolf, like, I can't say that I do. From, uh, from the bar down the street? Oh, Adolf, yeah, funny mustache. Bought me a beer, I think I was cool. He just did the Holocaust. What? No way. He, he's still doing the Holocaust. What do you mean? Like he's doing a Holocaust? No. This one's big. Fuck. Gotta buy that guy a beer. He's gonna think I'm a Jew. 
I, uh, I was almost killed today, you guys. I was driving, or was uh, walking down the street to meet my friend for lunch, and I was almost struck by a Chevy Suburban. The Chevy Suburban, to my knowledge, is the only sporty chili vehicle, ironically named for the sad mediocre lifestyle of its target demographic. And as this car whipped and weaved through traffic so that it could cut off a city bus and slide halfway into a crosswalk at a red light, nearly ending my life, I caught eyes with the driver, a blonde, 30 something year old male, probably named Chet, or Brad, or Chadley. <laughs> And as he screeched to a halt, I looked into his eyes, and he looked back at mine. And for a second, I knew that he knew that he was a dick. And you guys, that blew my mind. Because I thought they didn't know. Then I thought, you know, I shouldn't be so selfish. I should take a step back. Think about how he would have retold this story, walk a mile in his fairies. And uh, in a fit of narcissism, I figured that he would do stand-up comedy too, and the story would go something like this. What's up, 1983? How you guys doing? Brenda, looking good, looking good, Brenda. I, uh, I almost killed a kid today. I was uh, driving the Chevy Suburban to pick up little Timmy from school, and uh, I saw this stoner kid texting, not paying attention, a yellow light walking into the crosswalk, and I had to slam on the brakes and not splatter his ass all over the asphalt. And as I did so, screeching to a halt, I caught eyes with the kid, a dreadlocked 20 something year old male, probably named Ezra, or Moonbeam, <laughs> or Energy Turtle. And I looked into his eyes, and he looked back at mine, and I knew that he knew that he was a pretentious douchebag. And you guys, that blew my mind. I thought they didn't know. But I thought I should take a step back, get off my high horse, walk a mile on his Birkenstocks. I thought about how he would have retold the story. In a fit of narcissism, I figured that he would have done stand-up comedy as well. And I realized that he would do some weird performance artsy bullshit where he turned his back to the audience and alienated everyone and got a mediocre laugh at best. But I wanted to go through with it anyway, so I figured it would go something like this. So uh, I was almost killed today, you guys. I was uh, walking to meet my friend for lunch, and I was almost struck by a Chevy Suburban. A Chevy Suburban, to my knowledge, the only sport utility call a rocket name for the sad media group. Where am I? Did I just suck in a joke loop again? Did I get the only laughless applause break ever in comedy history? That's amazing. Oh my god. So let me tell you uh, something about myself. Uh, my mother's a pastor, my brother's a rapper, my sister's mentally handicapped. Um, my father grew up a poor black dude in the 70s and uh, managed to get his PhD from the University of Chicago, one of the best universities in the world. Um, but he still managed to leave before I was born. And I'm not saying that those things are surprising or related. But if you did it in your head, you might be a racist. And that's my favorite game, is this racist. I was playing that game at a bar the other day. I overheard a story. And I was complaining that the cops had assembled too similar looking of a lineup for him. And that made sense to me. He gave a description, and the guys looked too similar. He couldn't pin the guy. And then he proceeded to say, I saw some black guy taking a bike from my porch. And I was like, oh, that's why he thought they all looked the same. That's probably racist. That's kind of fucked up. And then he proceeded to say, so I chased him down in my underwear like Edward Norton. What Edward Norton movie is that? Is that the Hulk? Is that Keeping the Faith with Ben Stiller where he's a priest? No, it's American History X where he's a fucking neo-Nazi. And my problem with that is that at least Edward Norton caught the guy. He was a very athletic Nazi. That guy's just a slow racist. You know? So uh, I got a couple more impressions for you guys. Um, this is my impression of my father right before I was born.
Oh, make that last part so you didn't get back on the stage. Uh, this is my impression of me right before I was born. This womb is so hot. I hope I'm not born into a broken multiracial family. That would be confusing. This is um, my impression of my father, if he were a cowboy, right before I was born. Horse. Horse. Come on, horse. Get out of here. Don't make any noise. Don't want to wake up that white lady. Illinois is no place for a black cowboy with a PhD. And then I got off off stage, but I don't feel like doing that for you, so bye. Give Ishmael a round of applause. Yeah. 
We got one more chance. See him tomorrow night here in 1982. And now, the goddess is watching, watching Ishmael. The goddess is watching you too. Yes. We like them all here at the Tabernacle, so long as uh, you believe in nudity. I believe that Ishmael, based on his Facebook jerk-off story, believes in nudity. <laughs> So, both the goddess, the dumpster, and the exactly. So, we'll, 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 we will excuse him for being a Muslim and bless him for being a jerk off Facebook. No, I'm just kidding. He just believes in the goddess. Exactly right. God has blessed everyone of every religion, every race, color, creed, sexual orientation, gender, et al. Now, the way that we prove that we're the real deal and that this just wasn't some performance art show is that we commune with each other. We get a little bit drunk. I'm not saying on demon alcohol, but that's your choice if you feel it's right. Even though John Bell condemns it. Uh, unless it's right, in which case it's okay as long as it doesn't infringe on the rights of others. Uh, Remember that no matter what happens from this point on, do not be fooled by the, what would you call it, the decoy dumpster. The dumpster in the back, if, if we go out there, I'm not saying we will, but if we go out there, that front dumpster is a false dumpster. We have put that there to ward away our enemies. Behind that dumpster is the true grail of the kingpin and of Jamba and of everyone. The sacred dumpster is the smaller, uglier, smelly dumpster in the back. Okay? If we head out there, please don't give your attention to the decoy dumpster. That would be sacrilegious. Um, also, we are in control. We are now printing everything that the alligator prints. Thank you very much. We won the war. The war is won. Uh, our current mission is to, I'm getting word from Jamba, no, sorry, it's not a mission, it is done, it is done. I am happy to report, based on Racist and speaking in tongues. Those are racist. Assholes. Anyway, uh, it just became known to me that Rick Scott will not win the election for governor. Wow. Spoiler alert. And in November, medical marijuana will be legal in Gainesville, Florida. Thank you. And Florida in general. Thank you. Is that smart money? No, that has just been told to me. By the way, I've just been informed. No, no, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Yes, yes. If you if you check your internet right now. My internet? Yeah, check your internet, check your smartphones. I want you to go and put Tabernacle of Hedonism in the Google. Then the first link you will get is the Tabernacle of Hedonism webpage. I want you to go there. Then, I want you to go to the Google Tabernacle fact list. And at the bottom of the fact list, and I didn't even type this, this has just occurred now, and it is a miracle. At the bottom of that fact list, you will see that we have already predicted the truth of that fact that Rick Scott will lose the election and medical marijuana will be legal in Florida. It is at the bottom of our fact list right now. Jamba just told me. So ladies and gentlemen, you laugh now, that's fine. You may doubt. But I want to tell you, I said it for the record, I said it for the camera, it's already there on the fact list. Check back in November and see if we didn't tell you. Because there it is. Snake kills Dumbledore. I'm talking to the future. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage. Is Paige still here? No. Paige no. left us. Very good. That's okay. Paige, Paige said she had to go, but it is so then therefore in her honor we will do this now. This is the May Dumpster Jam. It will start here on stage. I don't tell it what to do. If you want to participate in it, you may. You will know when the time is right to participate in it. Please welcome to the stage Jared. Please welcome to the stage Blue. I will be participating in this uh, ritual with unknown objects to me. And uh, this will conclude the tabernacle, but hang out, buy drinks, then into the spirit. This is the May Dumpster Jam. Reverend Angel Dust, will you please come to the stage and lead us in our musical tribute to Jamba no, and Gloria. to take the stage and uh, do the introduction. Guys, let's make the Duster Jam. Hallelujah. Take away Logan. Congregation member of the Logan. Thank you, Reverend Angel Dust. Reverend Angel Dust.
great call. My master work.
Do they really? Oh, boy. Everyone in our budget. Oh, man. Oh, no. Oh, God. 